Jiu-Jitsu for sport. Jiu-Jitsu is grounded in combat. A lot of people became aware of the Jiu-Jitsu when the UFC started. You can't go have an actual fight with a person every day. So you can come and train Jiu-Jitsu every day. You can go compete a lot, right? But you can't go get in a street fight every day, right? That's not gonna last very long. <laughs> uh, a few things, Jiu-Jitsu for sport uh, means to me a few different things. You have to be uh, tactically superior, you have to be physically superior, you have to be uh, mentally superior, and you have to be like emotionally uh, slash spiritually superior, right? So like these four uh, elements, these four pillars of athleticism, you know, you have to excel in all four of them, um, where a lot of people in Jiu Jitsu miss a few of those. They miss like the, uh, the physical part because Jiu Jitsu kind of has a, a reputation of, you, know, you, can, you can do everything without strength and athleticism. And, and that's true and that's good. And that's really good for like uh, people who don't have that. That's awesome. But if you want to compete, and if you want to compete at a high level, you have to excel in all four of those. If all four, if any of the four pillars are lacking, then your opponent, your opponent's going to have an edge, okay? So that's what it means to me. I love the Jiu Jitsu for sports concept. Um, I started off doing a lot of tournaments. I've lost many, I've won many. There's that saying where it says, if you want something so bad, as much as oxygen, um, meaning like if you're gonna walk out in the water and keep walking, and eventually you're gonna learn how to swim if you don't know how to swim. So we would have our normal classes, but then we'd have hands training camp and it was intense. But Ishmael as a coach, as a professor, as a, as a gentleman, he knows how far to push you right before you break. So intense. And you have, in my opinion, some of the best training partners in all of Minnesota um, representing here and or people coming in and going. I really enjoy competing because I feel like it helps me mentally, physically, and tactically, I guess, in my jujitsu, in the sense of you have to be mentally prepared in order to deal with someone that is trying to rip your head off or rip your arm off. Like, it's one thing when it's your training partner and you trust them and you understand that, like, you know, I know how you roll, you know how I roll, and we can escalate together but it's completely different when it's someone else who doesn't care really about you or like is totally okay with ripping it and breaking your arm. Definitely want to be competing once I you know I'm here a little bit longer and traveling and going all over to tournaments. By no means do I think like everyone that trains jiu-jitsu has to compete but I do think um, it's gonna improve your jiu-jitsu a lot more it, it definitely gives you like a different look at how jiu-jitsu is because there's nothing that's ever going to compare to like what it's like being in a competition. Like you can come here and train like, extremely hard, but like if, once you go out into a competition and you have someone else that's coming at you going 100% as well. It's a really, it's a much different challenge than just coming here and rolling with people you know and trust. Because when you roll in a competition, you've never met the person before. You don't know how good they are. It's just, it's a million different variables that just run through your head the whole time. And sure. it's, it's nerve wracking. Um, and the first time the guy grabbed me in the gi, I was like, oh, this is totally different. Because it was like, oh, he's, this man is grabbing me, right? It's like, oh, no, you know, right? Like, I got to deal with this. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. And that's, there's also that. It's like, this could be a crazy person across the mat for me, right? And I have to deal with it right now because literally there's no other options, right? The sportive aspect of jiu-jitsu is extremely important. And again, I tell people, everybody should compete once. And then if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. And you don't have to apologize for that. But the sportive aspect of jiu-jitsu, because jiu-jitsu by nature is, even in sport where there's no punches or kicks thrown, and it's you know, about scoring points or getting submission, there's another person opposing you that you're in contact with. It's not some imaginary partner. It's not somebody that's not in contact with you. The sport aspect of jiu-jitsu is constantly testing jiu-jitsu. The stakes are higher in a competition in the sense of like, when you're training and you're going with your partners, it's very low-key, casual, like, I'm just here to have fun. But in a competition, it's serious business. You know, you, you want to do well, 
Um, and that forced me to think about um, what I'm good at, what I'm not good at outside of jujitsu, you know, in my life and thinking about like for work, what are the, the skill sets that I need to, um, to get better at? But it also helped boost my confidence and understanding like, hey, I've survived the M theory training camp for, you know, for pans or worlds or whatever. I can pretty sure I can survive this like technical training course or those kinds of things. So I think competing, what you really find is that you have to focus on your A game. And that, the fork, like she had said, you know, it, it really forces you to analyze your game, you know, figure out what you're best at, what's really working for you, and kind of cut the fat on what's not working and, you know, the things that you're kind of playing around with or maybe just trying to learn. Um, and it, it, it helps you, you know, figure out the gaps in terms of, you know, maybe you're not a good wrestler, so you need to work on that. Or maybe you don't want to be a good wrestler and you need to learn how to pull guard better. Um, and it helps you kind of like focus in on how you want to structure your jujitsu game. And I think in that aspect, you know, that's one of the key benefits that I've found from competing for myself. Um, I'm not a super competitive person, but I do find benefits in doing it, especially in the training camps leading up to it. I don't think I'll ever stop going to competition classes. Eventually, obviously, everyone kind of like stops competing, but even when I stop competing, however many years down the road that is, I think I'll always go to the, the comp class because I'm a very competitive person by nature, you know, and this is a time to kind of let loose and, you know, go really hard with people and, and, and who will accept it. Uh, in terms of like schedule, I think it's really hard for me at least to keep the competitive spirit like all year round, just constantly. Um, I'm very competitive all year round, but it does enter like a, a different mode of like, okay, we're in like competition mode right now. And when you cut weight, when you're lifting and when you're training hard, things add up. So after a tournament or if I have like kind of a gap, a couple of weeks, uh, between tournaments or like there's no tournament on the horizon that I'm going to be doing. I like to take a few weeks, you know, maybe even a month and just kind of decompress, you know, so when I roll, I'm not rolling to go, you know, put them through the mat or put them through the wall. I'm rolling to have fun, things like that. And that also really helps because it's really hard to turn the jujitsu switch off. Not even like competing wise, because like, I've been doing it so long and I love it like so much. Like you hug somebody, you go for the underhook. Yeah, but not even that, like, yeah, yeah. And not even that, right? Like, um, I heard Ishmael talk about this one time at a seminar where he's like, yeah, you know, there's like passion and then there's like obsession. You know, passion, you can like turn it on and off. Obsession, you can't really turn it off. And Ishmael was like, well, you know, uh, for him, he was like, I think about jujitsu perhaps when I shouldn't be thinking about jiu-jitsu. And I would like related to that because it's kind of like the same thing for me. Like I was like, oh wow, like someone, someone else kind of like gets it, you know? If you want to improve and you want to have an understanding of where your jiu-jitsu stacks up against other people, you should definitely compete, right? Um, and then it's also good to experience the sort of more extreme natures of it, right? Like. What does jiu-jitsu feel like when I'm dealing with someone who's going to use all of their physical force to stop me? And, and we've basically been like normalized, right? They're the same size as me. They're the same relative age, same belt, right? And I'm going to, that person is going to use all of, yeah. Yes, exactly. And so what, what it comes down to is that person is going to use all of their knowledge and physicality to stop me from doing what I want to do with my knowledge and physicality, which is important to feel. And it is a distinctly different feeling. Right, like you can you can train every day and train hard, um, but the minute you do compete, it's like a fundamentally different feeling. Yeah, it takes an extremely disciplined person. Notice I didn't say athlete. It takes an extremely disciplined person to succeed in the athletic endeavor known as sport jujitsu. Everything in my life uh, is built around and is made to support my ability to perform athletically. So um, all the, I would say 
probably 100 percent of the decisions that I make are in some way jujitsu is a part of that decision. So you know whether it's the food that I choose to eat, you know the obvious stuff, food that I choose to eat, um, uh, the kind of like healthy you know lifestyle habits that I have, or even uh, friends that uh, I choose to keep or choose to let go. Um, uh, yeah, I can't even. There's just there's so much, right? Relationships that I've uh, let go of or been thrown to the side, right? Um, yeah, basically everything in my life uh, is revolved around doing the best that I can here. You know, because oftentimes in the gym, you know, especially depending on the the rank of the person or the experience of the person that you're working with, you know, you're kind of letting them do a few things. You know, you're doing a few things, and it's kind of a you know working with the person. Um, whereas when you're actually you know in that competition mindset, that aggressive mindset, you're forcing your will upon your opponent, and you're you're really trying to, you know, cut out every opportunity that they have and take everything away from them. And oftentimes what Ishmael tells us, you know, is like, even if you don't beat your opponent, you want to make sure that they never want to compete against you again. Man, you want to compete and you want to do really well, it's M Theory, man. M Theory is the place to go. You know, Ishmael knows what it takes to make world champions, right? Pan champions. He has students that have won at all levels, right? So he trained with Sean Shirk for a while. So he literally knows what it's like to be around, uh, be a training partner to a world champion. And then when he was out in California, he trained all around with all these jujitsu world champions, you know? So he knows what it takes. And then as I've had success, uh, even at like kind of my uh, taste of success at, at Black Belt even, it's like, okay, now I kind of am starting to understand and I'm evolving as well. And, you know, we got blue, purple, brown belts, we got MMA fighters who are fighting, right? So we have a lot of wide range of, of people, you know? At the highest levels, you have to be a technician, you have to be conditioned, you have to eat correctly, you have to be mentally prepared, um, you have to make way. You have to try to time your peak performance with the day of the event. It takes an incredible amount of discipline to do all of those things. And the people that can do that for 10 years are incredibly impressive people. Because sometimes you'll see somebody come along and they'll have this big spike. But then two years later, it's like that person's, right? It's impressive they got to that peak but the person that can get to that peak and then 10 years later, it was like that person's still competing for a world title. That's an unbelievably disciplined human being. Unbelievably.